And we're live. What is up? You are hanging out on the live stream lounge. And today we have very special guest, actress Christy Porowski, Princess Kamala herself. I cannot wait. This is going to be such a fun show. So uh, first things first, uh, let me, um, I'm still not used to this, but I, I think I'm getting okay. I think I'm getting a pretty good handle on this. I'm going to switch this around to this. And uh, first of all, James, you need to say hello. We kind of forgot to say hello to you last week. No, that's so, there's, there's a lot going on. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, and you're you know what you're I mean you're very fashionable today, but I gotta say you're almost a little. This is like casual, James. Yeah, I was uh, I had some casual meetings today, so I had to look normal or at least <laughs> relatively. I like and tell me about this pin where it's oh. like sitting on top of your Yeah, that's uh that's, uh, that's amazing. That's Lucy from uh Disenchantment. Okay. Yeah, and uh, it's pretty much your personal demon that kind of sits around and hangs around with you. All right. <laughs> I like it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we have a great show, but first things first, what we need to do is and the bell didn't work. What happened? All right. First thing we need to do is what? <laughs> What's wrong with it? I got to Oh, maybe this has to All right, something's wrong. Anyway, ding. Oh, oh no. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, we are going to make some drinks. Here we go. So, I'm going to make something a little bit different for Christy because boys go to Mars to get candy bars. <laughs> And then girls go to Pluto to listen to Menudo. I don't know what. I don't know what that is. I, I don't know either. <laughs> All right. So we're going to, um, I'm going to make something special for Christy here. I'm going to start with a little bit of Splash Pineapple Mango. Okay. We can try that. We're going to do a little bit of this. Then... We are going to go straight to the good stuff. We are going to go right to my friend, Mr. Daniels. And we are just going to do a splash like that. A little more. Okay. Just a little more. He's my buddy. He's your buddy. Okay. And then um, is it, do you do it uh, shaken or stirred? Stirred is fine. All right. Let's see. This doesn't go back in the fridge. This stays room temp and it's got a little bit of it's got a splash of pineapple a splash of mango never had it this with way, chat yeah let me know if it needs anything no it doesn't need anything all right Just very very good james what are we doing uh well I don't know. I think if you normally just do the candy bar drink. I think like if if it's not broken, why fix it, right? They sound really good. Uh, are we doing caffeine? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So we've got good old Kirkland. Thank goodness for Costco. Dollar fifty hot dogs. A little bit of caffeine. Oh, don't forget the chicken bakes. Oh, the chicken and the, bakes the and pizza the pizza slices. Oh my! Oh caffeine yeah. Hundreds of dollars to shopping. Yeah, but you you get so much bang that, for your buck. That and I, uh, that showed me the the beauty of the chicken bake and the mocha freeze. You know, many lunch breaks uh, at the <laughs> And you don't need uh, a uh, a membership no, to uh, not need a membership to walk up and go to the food court. I've been stopped a couple times, and it's always that one particular guy. I know sure, it's that one. Job. I'm just doing my job, sir. So like, well, congratulations, Paul Blart. Thank you. But for then. Making. But he can't really do anything because you can still go, like, you don't, you know. I had to go all the way back to the house, grab the card, come all the way back. And then by the time I got back into the food court, like, I really just drive there and back again for a hot dog. <laughs> it was like, he is the principal. All right. So, James, uh, you have a choice. You've got mocha, cookie dough, peanut butter cup, vanilla bean, glazed donut, butter toffee, or salted caramel. Mm. I'll go with that peanut butter cup. Peanut butter cup. Those sound good just on their own. All right. I am going to do, you know what? I'm going to shake it up. I usually do salted caramel. Tonight, I'm feeling a little butter toffee. Sometimes I like the sound of words like 
the sound of a word itself like like butter toffee just sounds like butter toffee doesn't it sound it sounds delicious right even before you taste it yeah but then there's things that like for a long time i didn't like guacamole because there's no way to say guacamole and make it sound good it's like guacamole <laughs> Woo! right that does not sound good it actually is really good though it's like when it, uh, Eric made ceviche. I don't, I don't eat it, but it's just ceviche. Yeah. Like, you know, what is that? Um, like crab, onions, just cilantro, with just some other gross stuff, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I personally cannot bear to eat it, but it's fun to say. All right. Cheers to the live stream lounge Sunday Woo night. Thanks for hanging out with us, everyone. Woo and roll thanks for hanging out with us today of course we are hanging out with the lovely christy perowski she's absolutely amazing as princess kamala there is so much to talk about you were fantastic and uh of course these films were very difficult but they were like physically like we were talking to eric Steele last week about stunts and i realized right before the show like you also did all of your stunts we never brought in someone else for anything you did I didn't right have very many stunts but i did it anything that there was i did there was a lot i mean there was a lot of running around but in, in particular i remember there's a couple things like leaping into things that oh were like, yeah the car outside yeah like that was that was yeah, that was I really ended good up with some bruises oh you did uh -huh. oh whoops <laughs> but it's okay because we got the shot. We did. We did get the <laughs> shot. Yeah, it was fantastic. So, so much stuff that I want to uh, talk about. Uh, but first, one of the things that I wanted to share is, if it's okay with you, um, I, this is probably going to embarrass you, but I did some digging, and I wanted to share with everyone. Let me bring this up here. So, of course, most people are familiar with. Uh, uh, Princess Jasmine is usually what people are familiar with. And so what's interesting is now uh, adults today usually grew up with Aladdin. We've got this new generation of Aladdin fans. Um, so what's great, and uh, this was the first teaser poster uh, with Christy that's kind of got the silhouette. This is actually one of your outfits from the second film, but I just thought the silhouette was so cool. But I just wanted to embarrass you real quick, and I had to share... Oh my gosh, look at this photo. This is so, so adorable. That's baby Christy. That is baby Christy. And you have to share because you might just look at this and say like, oh, that's adorable. Oh, she was she was so adorable and, and so cute. But there's something interesting about this photo. Yeah, that carpet I thought could fly. So I would sit on it and I was obsessed with Aladdin and ja the Disney version of Aladdin and Jasmine. And so I thought my carpet could fly because their carpet could fly. So, of course, why couldn't mine? So I would sit on it for hours and, of course, not go anywhere. But no one could tell me otherwise. So I kept trying. Now, it looks like you're blocking a doorway yeah. here. Was th Did this ever cause a... Uh... Yeah, it caused issues sometimes. Okay. Like, no, you can't go around me because I'm waiting for you're, it to move. Yeah, you're busy, <laughs> you're busy flying through uh, a whole new world. That is just, that is just awesome. So adorable, and oh no, there's more. Uh, the, <laughs> oh. <laughs> there's at least one more, and um, so this is adorable. So tell us about this. Uh, I was at Disney the first time I went to Disney World. Actually, the only time I've been to Disney World in Florida, aside from when we went for the Star Wars convention, mm -hmm. um, I was about eight, I think, there, and uh, I was getting an autograph from no other, no one other than Jasmine herself. Mm -hmm. Um, that's an autograph book in my hand. I actually do still have that book. No way. Yeah. That is awesome. Of course she's not the real Jasmine. But yeah. But I mean, that's still, she that's, looks like her. yeah, yeah. That's so cool. Couldn't at that age, you couldn't tell me otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, but that's her. <laughs> that is awesome. So adorable. All right. So, uh, obviously, I'm going to uh, jump to the comments real soon because there's probably some questions and there's probably some comments. But I wanted to start with one of my questions, which is, 
you know, because everyone is so familiar with um, Disney's Aladdin, I'm curious, um, in your mind, what are the similarities and differences between Princess Jasmine that everyone knows and Princess Kamala, which people haven't met yet? I would say that Kamala and Jasmine are pretty much the same, except for, <clears throat> um, like, they're both very family-oriented, and they're both very strong-willed and independent women, even though they're they're both princesses, and they're royalty, and they're basically hand-given everything that they have, and haven't had to lift the thumb, and have guards, and maids, and yada yada. Um, she doesn't care for any of that, and she would prefer to just be on her own and take care of herself like any young woman would like to nowadays um without a man's help um but then there's also the part where she's in in princess for jasmine i think she's like a little naive more so than kamala is and Kamala's more realistic and down to earth and understands a little bit more and you get to see that a little bit more with her character and um, get to know her better uh, on a more personal level and her day-to-day -day and what she actually goes through versus Jasmine where you kind of hear about it but you don't really see it and you have to really like, just make it up in your head of and, and, and imagine how you think it's actually going but for us with Kamala you get to see me act out what she's actually going through on a day-to-day -day basis but for the most part like personality wise things like that I think they're pretty much the same it's just you get to see a more realistic version of it in our version of it. That's awesome. You, you actually put it way better than I could have. That's <laughs> a, that's great. And I think that's one of the neat things about these films is when I was writing them, as much of a fan as I was of Aladdin and the Aladdin story, there's a lot of things that are just kind of um, easy. It's squeezed into a 90-minute movie. So... Um, Aladdin, who is the protagonist, for example, um, we're just supposed to like believe that, oh, he's such a nice guy. Like, oh, because he gave, he gave a piece of bread to like kids that were hungry. Like, so he's, man, he's such a good guy. But let's just ignore the fact that he's a total thief. He's a total liar. He's all of the, like, he's a really horrible person, but we kind of just gloss over that, you know? So with these films, I wanted to take a more realistic approach and uh, with the, know the characters better. Absolutely. And with the princess, I think one of the things that is really neat is we kind of see a lot more of the princess in her day to day life, the things that she's going through. The other thing that I really like is the relationship that Princess Kamala has with her father. And in all the other versions, I'm trying to think off the top of my head because I've seen so many versions of Aladdin, and usually the Sultan is like a doofus he's just like a dingleberry and part of it is just to move the story along like why would the dad ever agree to this oh let's just make him kind of aloof to the whole thing and then move the story right along and i you know i didn't i didn't want that i wanted a more realistic take let's forget the fact that this is like robots and starships and lasers <laughs> and uh like you know mystical powers and stuff more for realistic them. for the time frame that said it yeah yeah for sure and um so i just think it's just a much more interesting look as we kind of immerse ourselves into this world. But uh, yeah, that's awesome. Let's jump to some comments really quick and let's say hello to everyone. Um, let's see if I push this here. Oh, we got some comments for sure. All right. We have, look at this. Eric Steele says, Woo! what's up? Hey, that's awesome. Eric is hanging out with us in the comments. Uh, whoops. I did this wrong. If I do this, does that do? No, nope, that doesn't. Okay. Um, so we've got Dave Todd in the house. Hey, kids. We've got Cassidy failing. That's Lu Lucy? Lucy. Who's Lucy? Lucy. Oh, oh. <laughs> the pin. That's right. There you go. All right. Uh, hey, Matt, just uh, want you to know that your Bob Ross Star Wars video is close to my heart and always makes me feel calm when I'm stressed. Oh, my. That'll be our little secret. That's awesome. Very cool. Awesome. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight, Caleb. Hello, David Van Dyke. What is up? Now, there's something. Wait, David. Oh, don't let me forget when we talk about, uh, David, when we talk about the uh, the Recreate My Trailer contest, I was going to uh, mention you and that if there's any editors that I can hook you up with. Uh, so don't let mm -hmm. me forget that uh, when we jump to that. What is up, everyone? I hope you're having a good evening, too, Kyle. Uh, what is up, PMK, those drinks? 
Paul, when you're here, you need to be, I'm going to, I'm going to hand it over to you because I know you are phenomenal at making drinks. You are like world-class. You're world-class everything. I cannot wait to have you on. I believe it's two weeks from tonight. Oh, Michael Caine. Yeah, the, the PMK episode is going to be great. I'm actually going to have you make the drinks that night. Um, wait, is everything okay? Uh, Matt didn't spill. I know the last couple, the last couple weeks, like every time I go, I just get like anxious for all of the, uh, all of the, the goodness, the candy bar goodness. And it always, uh, sloshes around everywhere. I know. Isn't that such a sweet, adorable picture of, uh, Christy and just amazing that Aladdin 3477 is art imitating life or is it life imitating art? Which one is it? Depends on how you look at it, I guess. That, and, and my dad is chiming in. The history of your younger years is so amazing. See a lot? I think that might have been that might have been a, a typo on a phone or something. Um, a LinkedIn user. Oh, my gosh. Finally, we get some LinkedIn. Uh, what was the casting like for a role like this? I imagine it takes a certain kind of person uh, to get this role across. I'm curious what your thoughts, uh, what, what did you think of the casting process? Well, when I auditioned, I didn't know who Matt or uh, at the time Lindsay were, uh, came to their house, auditioned, thought that was kind of odd to begin with, to be honest. I was like, I'm going to somebody's house in their basement. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> and mom, you know where I'm at, right? <laughs> um, in case anything were to have happened. But sure. then um, it, it was great. I mean, very welcoming and um made me feel at home and then i read for actually the newscaster role and that's as much as we went we didn't go to any other characters and then i got a call a couple weeks later i think it was yeah. while i was at work and they're like well how do you feel about i can't say what they said because it might be a spoiler friend i don't know which film it's in oh yeah um, <laughs> right so yeah yeah so they said something if i was okay with that happening and i was like sure why and because <laughs> it doesn't like why would that happen in an Aladdin movie yeah so yeah, then yeah. I was like yeah okay and they were like well how about you being princess and I'm like okay yeah <laughs> oh my gosh that's awesome totally unexpected because it's not what I anticipated yeah you know it's funny I remember for me the whole casting process was funny because everyone that and it wasn't just cast but even crew when I was getting people on board and by the way James was one of them as well uh that's how I met James was casting for Aladdin 3477. But I remember this was going to be such a big daunting thing that instead of making it like, okay, you need to read for me, impress me, show me what you got, you know, and making it like that, I feel like it was almost more me like, okay, this is going to sound great. And I had the paintings, right. And I had like drawings and like, okay, so it looks like this, it's going to be, and pretty much everyone's reaction was like, I mean, it looks neat. I have no idea how you're going to do this, but uh, sure, I guess I'm in. And it sounds crazy to me, but okay, well, you know, let's uh, let's go for broke. And uh, and I feel like that process was almost, even though we did, obviously we saw a lot of people and we had to make uh, some tough choices, but um, uh, but I feel like it was almost me and Lindsay selling you more than more than the other way around, which was. Uh, which was kind of funny. How many people auditioned for like Eric's and my roles? Um, gosh, I don't know. Um, there were a lot of people that sent in headshots for sure, but I want to say for Princess, there was probably 12. Oh. Yeah, 12 people that, that came in and read. Um, lots of uh How many headshots yeah. you got. What's that? How many headshots do you think came in? Oh gosh. Um I I want to say for Aladdin, there was there, I think there were over 10,000 oh. and for the, the role of the princess, there was probably over 2000 Wow! seriously. And I, what, part of it was I added every single casting thing that I could worldwide <laughs> and we just got, we just got pummeled and, uh, Good. but yeah, it was, it was cool. It was great. I found you in a newspaper. Oh, really? Yeah. Is that where, really? Oh Thanks my gosh. My grandma. Yeah. Um, love the backstories. Absolutely. Mama Rick. Um, what's up, David? Ah, oh, no, no. um, let's see. In the multiverse, uh, Jasmine is princess on Earth 76, and Kamala is princess oh. on Earth 76. Oh, clever, Bredge. 
Awesome, John. I can't wait to get you on here as well. Hello, Justin. Hello, Daryl. Kamala, what's up? Hey, Brad. Whoops. What is up, Mike? Mike, we got to get you on here sometime as well. Um, awesome. Ayo, it's Cambriones. What is going on? Um, uh, what was casting like for a role like this? Also, all right, very colorful guitar bottles. What are those? Very sick. So funny story uh, for my birthday. I had a big milestone birthday uh, last September. And no joke, three completely different people got me <laughs> these awesome tequila guitars and not only did three people get me these guitars it was not planned but they got me three different flavors three different colors they're so beautiful and i've got three rocking guitars like i'm afraid to drink them because they're just so beautiful and i just love the way i know it kind of looks like a, a mad scientist lab with all the crazy colors and stuff but i just love uh i love the way it looks with uh light shooting through these fun colors love it all right the history of your uh, younger years is amazing considering you were the princess in these films absolutely absolutely uh when and where can we watch the film i'd love to hear how uh you got this a go including funding such a project so um this was actually self-funded and there is such a long story behind it because I ran out of money so many times, but because it was filmed over the course of five years, I was able to kind of keep going. And every time I would run out of money, I also had a full-time job teaching at a college, but I was also taking on extra work and illustrating Star Wars projects and everything. So money was continually going in and I would continue to uh, spend it. So that was pretty much how uh, it all came to be at the very end, especially the last two months of filming over the course of five years. I was so broke. I had maxed out every single credit card. No new credit card companies would take me. I tried everywhere. It That was it. I was done. So for the last two months, I actually stopped paying all of my bills which made my credit not great for like, you know, for my, uh, for auto and stuff. But you know what? I was in it to win it. And, um, uh, you know, to me, uh, to be fair, I was not living in a cardboard box, um, but still I was putting in my all and I was wearing shoes. I was wearing Crocs that had holes in the bottom um, because I didn't want to buy shoes because I, that money could be spent on, you know, something else. So I really well, wanted to went over like five years without buying a pair of shoes. I think. Oh yeah. And I already before that hadn't bought shoes in a couple of years. I've uh, seen you walk through the snow with, yeah. in, in, those crocs? Crocs, yeah. in those, in those whole Crocs without socks. Yeah. It'll like, no, let's just suffer for your craft. You know what though? <laughs> I was living, I was living the dream. I was making my magnum opus. I was, I was uh, I was always into it. I never never felt like poor me and awful me. Oh yeah, magnum opus. Uh, magnum opus. Woohoo! Um, uh, anyway, but uh, as to when and where the film is coming out, that is TBD. It'll be this year. There's a lot of interest coming in, but uh, right now the focus is on the Kickstarter. The Blu-ray is coming out for sure at the end of the year and um and through the kickstarter you can get that then that's the only way you can get that right is through the kickstarter is through the kickstarter and there are some private screenings that are going to begin this spring the executive producer screenings are sold out but there are some red carpet screenings that you can get as an add-on on the kickstarter so be sure to check out the kickstarter faux show um Colorful guitar. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Love the bar. Thank you, Cam. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. So a um, couple of things I want to chat about real quick is I want to talk about next real quick. I want to talk about, oh, and there's uh, obviously Princess Kamala and Princess Jasmine. Um, that's actually the cover of a... Um, a video that's going to be coming out next week, I think, but draw this in your own style. So there's a couple uh, new things that have come in that I wanted to uh, share that's with cool. you. So one is Mark Lemieux, I think is how you pronounce that. 
Um, he did this awesome uh, Eric Steele as a Lego minifig. This is just awesome. I love that he's got the lamp and I love the, like the, the composition of it and like that it's like breaking the border and you see like a little Taj Mahal in the background. This looks so cool. And uh, he also sent me just the line art. And I thought this was cool because doesn't this look like it'd be a sweet coloring book page or something like that? Yeah. Like a be, color by numbers or something. Yeah. To make it authentic like, looking. This would be so fun to color. Uh, really, really cool. Absolutely love it. Then another Mark, Mark McDonald, uh, I think just as a joke, sent this, but I thought this was amazing. <laughs> so I had to share this too because <laughs> Fiji is the ultimate radio head the ultimate paranoid android and i just thought this was such a fun uh a fun radio head co well, uh, cover when the blu-ray comes out are we gonna have like um what do you call the soundtrack as well because we could do something like that gosh i would love to that's something i need to talk with fixed music about and i would think if there isn't one for the first film there might be one for like the entire trilogy gotcha. you know there might be like a a color, and maybe that'll be like a double disc thing or something. But uh, sooner or later, it has to happen. Um, full, full show. All right. Uh, next up, real quick, one of the things that I wanted to chat about real quick, um, because, you know, we're talking to uh, Christy Porowski, as you guys know, and your acting is so incredible in this film. And I wanted to share a story. Again, I hope this doesn't embarrass you, but I wanted to share a moment that was amazing where you just brought your a game and you were incredible so i know you said like you didn't do a lot of stunts and everything but i have to tell you oh that one <laughs> this was one of the most difficult things to film and so here's what's up this is um this is princess kamala she's taking a koi bath this is part of the film it's a really really cool part of the film and we got this very beautiful footage. I actually, this is a, a koi pond that's in my own backyard because in my vision, I wanted to have like this water cascading completely behind you. It actually used to be only about a foot and a half maybe that it would rise up. So we actually redid the whole koi pond and made it maybe four feet like above the water yeah, or something I like that. Yeah, above it when I was in it. Yeah, so we um, so <laughs> went all out to do this on purpose we wanted to film this in, I think, either July or August yeah, because sure it wasn't. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, we wanted it to be as warm because I knew like the water is the water is always at least 10 degrees, if not more colder than it is outside. So I was like, we'll film in the middle of summer, you know, and it's a pond. Usually ponds are warmer than like, say, the ocean or something like that. I don't know what happened, but on the day of filming, it was freezing in there. Mm -hmm. So that morning, all day long, uh, Clayton Celesto was basically his job all day was taking pots of water, boiling pots of water, then carrying it out to and pouring the, bo the boiling water into the pond to try to warm it up. And after a day of doing that, like we may have raised the temperature a degree, <laughs> may, maybe seven degrees, but. It was freezing. It was so cold. Yeah, it was. But you were... couldn't tell by looking at me. <laughs> no, and that was the thing that was amazing is like I was feeling the water and I was like, oh my God, like, I don't know if I could get in and, and how I would do it. So it was so funny because you got in and you were just like, I... and I'd be like, oh my gosh, poor thing. And I would say action and you would just like luxuriously. And I was like, what? No way. And she was just you know, with the water and just like graceful. And I'd say cut and you'd go high. <laughs> it was amazing. You were so good. You were such a trooper. I wanted to get, the, the, get, it, get it right quickly so we could get done with it. it. It was so good. And like, honestly, this is like one of the biggest stunts of the film because that water was so cold. And... I remember I was wearing uh, uh, rain boots. Mm -hmm. it, uh, because I didn't want to touch the bottom. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I cleaned it out pretty good, but still, sometimes it just feels slippery. And and uh, um, but uh, it was so great. And then the uh, interesting story. Uh, normally, our director of photography is Alex Jacobson, who is phenomenal. He wasn't available that day, and Eric Steele 
who is also who plays Aladdin. He is really good at filming, and he has done. Uh, I think we were even talking last week about uh, stuff that he's filmed for Maxim magazine. Yep. So he's really, really good at lighting and everything. And he just really captured some really, really awesome shots of you uh, in this koi bath. So, so cool. Very, very fun. So the next thing that I wanted to chat about real quick is one of the rewards that you guys get in the sky sale sky club is these eight by tens that are signed by the actors and actresses by the way in the sky sale sky club there's eight rewards this is not the eight rewards this is one of the rewards and you get eight of these awesome glossies uh, these eight by tens. This is the one that is signed by Princess Kamala, will be signed by Princess Kamala. So if you guys are interested in getting one of these signed by Christy, um, these might be available as an add-on actually. So you might be able to check that out uh, as well. Be sure to check out the Sky Sale Sky Club, which I think is the sixth the sixth reward. Are they um, original signature or are they yes. copied? No, yeah, uh, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to sign them all. It's please. okay, we've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're uh, so it'll be it'll be real signatures. It'll be uh, it'll be fantastic. Oh, that that might make people want to buy it more if they know that it's real and not just a copy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's definitely gonna be real signatures for sure. We'll probably when we're signing these, we'll probably do a video showing that so okay. that you can see that they're that they're uh, that they're real. And, uh, and that'll be a lot of fun. So uh, next up, I have a question, and that is, um, do you, Christy, have anything in common with your character, Princess Kamala? Um, at first, I wasn't sure if I was going to, but I think as time went on, I started to realize that she's a strong, independent woman, and I've been raised to be a strong, independent woman, and I don't want to take any crap from anybody. And um, when it comes to family, I am all about my family. You're not going to do anything to them or you're going to have to deal with me kind of person. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like Kamala is the same way as you'll see in the films. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure where she starts getting that way, which film it is, because we filmed everything out of order. So mm -hmm. I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but eventually you'll get to see that side of her. So I feel like we, we ended up becoming the same way. Yeah. That's Except awesome. for the... The whole like father thing, like the that connection, mm -hmm. that uh, and um, the not having a mother and the having the father that was very structured and controlling and everything like that. I didn't have that, so that was just me acting. Mm -hmm. So that I didn't relate to, but the rest of her um, characteristics yeah. and things like that, I did. And like I said before, you're it's so phenomenal. There are some scenes you have a couple scenes, um, or at least a scene trying to think in the first film with Jerry Hayes, who plays the Sultan, but then a lot of scenes with uh, Jerry Hayes in the second film. Mm -hmm. And there are just some standout, like dramatic scenes that are so good. Your acting is phenomenal. And of course, Jerry is great too. And uh, it's, uh, uh, those it was just nice to play awesome. off of them. Yeah. It, it helps when the other person you're reading with knows what they're doing and is very like personable and open and, it isn't like, oh, it has to be this way and trying to control the situation. He was very like, well, what do you need? I'll help you. And so kudos to Jerry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great. Um, so cool. Next up, real quick, I want to jump to um, something that we that was kind of going on last week, which was uh, I shared a live video on the official collector's edition. And then like a day or two later, I shared that there was... Uh, an additional cover, and I was kind of going back and forth between the two. So amongst all of my uh, social media, I was kind of asking you guys, A or B, which one do you like better? And so far, the consensus has uh, has definitely leaned towards B. B looks a little more contemporary. A looks a little more old school, you know, kind of 80s. Um, so uh Nat Geo, yeah, kind of like National that Geographic. First, that A looked like a magazine cover and then the B looked like a poster. Okay. Me. But I ended up just after I read everybody's comments, I was like, okay, I, I get it. I like the I like B better. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people like this image. There's a chance, like when I designed this, I actually designed it as a 
movie poster, but I also knew that I was going to need something for the cover of the official collector's edition. So I'm kind of debating whether this is going to be another poster or whether this is going to be an art print as well. So curious um, what you guys think about that. And if you guys have a preference, what would you, would you guys like this as a poster? Would you like it as an art print? Uh, or both. Or both? <laughs> would you like it on a boat? Would you like it with a goat? <laughs> Um, anyway, and then I also shared, uh, if you saw the video or I also shared on Instagram and Facebook, a look at a lot of the pages. Of course, this is the spread on, uh, Princess Kamala. And I've just put a lot of time into designing this book. I've had so much fun with it. Um, I mean, I love all different ways of being creative, but one of the things I don't get to do as often that I absolutely love, I just love layout. I love composition. I love arranging. Okay, the words are going to be here. The picture is going to be here. Your eyes are going to flow across this way. And it's, um, uh, I don't think I'm a master at it, but um, but I have a lot of fun with it. And um, I don't know. I, I think, think that these... shows if you have fun with it. Mm -hmm. I think it comes across. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I just can't wait for you guys to see this book uh, next to the film, more than the toys, more than anything else. Uh, the film, obviously, I'm the films I'm most excited about. But number two is definitely this book. I think this is just going to be a, such a fun read to go through, to meet all the characters, all the places that the, you know, the locations that you'll be visiting in the film behind the scenes, and then a look at some of the fun things that we've been doing to promote Aladdin in the past. I uh, can't wait to show you more on that. So um, speaking of this costume here, I was curious. Um, I have a question for you, and that is between, uh, there are three costumes in the film, and I was curious what your favorite was. So this is, I think here, you're, this is maybe a test when we were testing out some of your uh, costumes yeah. and trying to get uh, continuity and stuff. So uh, one costume is kind of this ceremonial garb here. Then this is more of like a dress down, like maybe. Uh, it was, I think we said it was like pajamas. Yeah, almost like pajamas or something like that. This is a really fun scene right here. I, I don't want to spoil too much of what this scene is, but it's really, really funny. And um, uh but I can't wait for you to see this. But I just love those flowery pants because they're just like, um, uh, I hope this doesn't sound creepy, but I just want to touch them like because they're just so <laughs> fluffy. You know what I mean? They just look like I want to touch, you know? Um, so cool. Oh, my God, James. Okay, it, was, it wasn't creepy until you made the face. Now it's now it's now now I'm a creeper. Okay. So, um, and then, oh, this isn't supposed to be sideways. But then there is the, uh, this is not like, there is another outfit that's even more kind of like the Jasmine-ish kind mm -hmm. of outfit, but this is kind of one. I guess you can see it better here where it's, uh, yeah, where it's uh, not accidentally flipped over. But um, so of these three costumes, and I think in the second film, you see a couple of these again, but in the second film, there's five different costumes mm -hmm. that you'll see in that film. But in this first film, these are the three that you see. So I'm curious, what was your favorite uh of the three of the three of these I three would say the that one the pajama one pa because it was easy to get in and comfortable and i could uh, sleep on breaks oh <laughs> okay in the break room nice yeah the blue one was hard to get the top on okay and the red yellow ish one was very heavy i remember that to wrap. i remember yeah and i remember like the wrap was heavy and you had to like stuff it in and uh -huh. it was just like if you move the wrong way like things would come and apart and i couldn't use the bathroom once we put it on <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so yeah the other one <laughs> yeah that's great that's great but it just it looks so awesome in the in the all three of them are just just phenomenal i mean they all just had good things i just prefer the pink one yeah super cool all right I think it's time. First, let's go to some comments, and then uh, we are going to get to the thing. I think this is one of the things that a lot of people are waiting for, the new Fiji designer toy. Can't wait. Let's go to some comments, though, real quick. And that is, um, how were the koi with trying to heat the water? At the time we filmed it, there were no koi in the pond. I was going to say that no koi were hurt in the making of the film. That's right. That's I a, requested there be no fish yeah. in there. <laughs> Um, and it's interesting because um, in the uh, 
in the film, it's made to look like there are Koi, and we actually did film Koi in there, but not at the same time, and it just is the illusion that the uh, that the fish are swimming in there at the same time. All right, Matt, I found some different style Aladdin 3477 posters on eBay that are signed by me, and some are they legit or are they fakes? They are legit, uh, at least the ones that I have seen, and those are some of the teaser posters that we oh, okay. have signed yeah. at uh, Full Sail University and some of the different uh, Star Wars celebrations. So um, the ones that I have seen on eBay are legit for sure. Um, let's see here. Um, hello from one of your MACA 2176 students. Awesome. Uh, for those of you that don't know, MACA 2176 is my painted illustration class. Glad you're hanging yeah. out and you better be doing your homework. Um, that's <laughs> awesome. All right. Okay. So someone here is not a fan of <laughs> Kamala Harris. Okay. We, we stay away from politics here. Um, what is up Aaron G TV? Hey there, Matt. Hey princess. So, uh, I'm going to announce this again at the end of the um, at the end of the show. But next week, the special guest is Aaron G. The Gin of Wisdom is going to be hanging out with us in the lounge next week. Can't wait for that. And I think Aaron reminded me today that next week is also the Super Bowl. It is. So, um, which people like that are like me. Sometimes creative people. <laughs> are not into sports as much like me. So like, I didn't know that next week is the Super Bowl. I have no idea who's playing or anything like well, that. And I'm might not, not watch it live. Yeah. yeah. And watch it later. It, it's so, sports are totally cool. It's not, it's not my thing nachos. as much. You go for the nachos. That's right. And usually I love going to Super Bowl parties, but usually I'm hanging out in the kitchen with all the ladies, not just because the ladies are there, but all the goodies are there. And, uh, to me, it's a lot more fun to uh, to hang out there. And um, what did you say? He didn't say oh, jeez. Um, anyway, um, uh, yeah, so uh, that's cool. Anyway, for those of you who aren't going to be watching the Super Bowl, hang out with us in the live stream lounge. It'll be a lot of fun. And I have a lot of new stuff to show you guys next week as well. Shauna Golmata says, hey, you guys. What's up, Shauna? Jerry, hey there, brother. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so I can't wait to share with you guys the next Fiji designer toy. So here is what's up. You guys have already seen the first one, right? So this is the standard Fiji as he looks in the film. Last week I shared... His friend, Inverse Fiji, which is the same colors of Fiji, but everything is kind of like inversed and changed around. So today, I am very happy to share with you guys the next Fiji variant, which is, drum roll, the next one is <laughs> Kong Chiam Fiji. And this one is very cool. It's very beautiful. Let me pull them out right here. Uh, it actually looks more beautiful in, in person. I think it's just striking the blue, the hints of red. Look at that hint of red. So some of you might be like, Kong Chiam Fiji, what is that? Well, it's actually based on the Kong Chiam police trooper that you'll see in the film in Kong Chiam. And Kong Chiam is an interesting city. It's in um, Thailand. And this city is interesting because it's um, it has really like tall buildings, but instead of the buildings going up really tall, the buildings actually go underground and there's all of these underground uh, chambers that kind of connect them. And, uh, and you'll see this in the film. Anyway, the main colors of this city, uh, at least in my fictional version of the movie, the main colors of the city are kind of like this light blue and this kind of pale yellow, You'll, you actually don't see it in this photo here, but uh, when you see the city, that's just kind of like the main motif of it. And so, and then the cool thing about it, the accents, if you look at the logo that's on the shoulder and uh, it's the Thailand crest that's on the chest as well. Uh, so you see these beautiful hints of red and um, it's just so striking. It's so, it's so beautiful. 
So I don't know if this one's my favorite, but I have to say of all six Fidgies, and you still have three more to, to see, this one I think is the most beautiful. It's the most like royal looking mm -hmm. and it almost looks like Princess Kamala, doesn't it? Have like kind of a prince. It's almost like the Princess Kamala Fiji. <laughs> um, it's just got a really neat look to it because it kind of looks like the colors of, uh, of one of your outfits. Absolutely love it. What do you think, James? I really... I do like the difference in the eyes this time, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the difference? Oh, and it's just the other ones uh, are, white. are white. This one's black. But mm -hmm. the accent with the red is, yeah. is nice, too. I'm like, look at that. Look it at that tramp stamp. Okay. It's really standing out. Oh. You know, it's, yeah. <laughs> he does not have a tramp stamp. That is his backpack. So funny. His jet, oh. Yeah, his jetpack. Yes. If you look at it and if you flip them like that, it's like the other little robots looking at you. Doesn't it? It, it no. may look like arms. Yeah. No, I'm not mooning you with the robot. Saying, <laughs> That's what I thought right? you were Doesn't trying it almost do. look like a robot this way? It's cute. Um, all right. Uh, next up, I wanted to... Um, so, Christy, I'm curious. Um, outside of Kamala, of course, who is your favorite character in Aladdin 3477? Did you? Fidgy. Oh my God. I should have asked you this question before. And I would have said, it's great that you say Fidgy because we're going to show you the new uh, Fidgy variant. Awesome. Yeah. Fidgy is adorable, isn't yeah, it? I like um, I, seeing him be caricatured, if that's the right way to describe it, um, versus actually seeing him like in the trailer. It it's mind boggling. So I'm like, well, where's the guy with the stick? Like, I yeah. know there was a person there. Where do you go? Kind of thing. Because I I don't know all the behind the scenes. Was there, stuff. though? Yes. Was there? I'm sure there was. Oh, you, oh, so you don't, so you cannot physically confirm that there was. Interesting. Contractually, I cannot confirm. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> but um, I just like his noises mm -hmm. and like the way he sounds like he actually is having a conversation with Aladdin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's cool. And I call it I call it the Yoda syndrome where, you know, when they were filming The Empire Strikes Back, they didn't know if they were making the biggest mistake or what. They had this puppet that just looked kind of ridiculous. And there was no puppet like that in the first Star Wars film. And a lot of people were just like, oh, my gosh, what are we doing? But then when the movie came out, Yoda just came to life. And Yoda was like everyone's favorite and uh, really, really cool. And um, I just think it's really neat. You know, also behind the scenes with films like Star Wars, when they had R2-D2, um, sometimes R2-D2 had uh, Kenny Baker, who was a little person who was inside, you know, moving the head. We actually and seen shaking him. It. Oh, yeah, that's right. And he walked right past me and I didn't know who he was. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, a lot of times things went wrong with like the remote control and stuff. So a lot of times when you see R2-D2 moving across the screen like this, but you it doesn't like show the wheels. The reason why is because the, the mechanical like remote control broke down, the motor broke down. They had a rope tied to the middle foot and literally someone was just pulling R2-D2 like this. So when you see R2 just doo -doo -doo -doo, rolling like this, they were just pulling a rope because they just- Can you imagine redoing the takes over and over that poor person pulling it? Oh my gosh, crazy. But so the same thing with, um, with Fiji, there were so many different ways that we would do in-camera techniques where Fiji was puppeteered and at times it's like you look at it and you a lot of times it was me or it was Oz, you know, standing like this puppeteering it and stuff. And I'm sure a lot of times it looked like, oh, my gosh, what are they doing? But when you see it on camera, when you see it for, and then when you hear the noises that Fiji makes and stuff, it just it really comes to life. It really and, uh, meant a big difference. And it was all very worth it. Mm hmm. Yep. Um, the next thing I wanted to chat about real quick is um, last week, Attack mm -hmm. on Show dropped their new video. And um, this is one of the best interviews I've ever had. It is such a fun video. Uh, check it out. It's on their YouTube page. It's also, uh, there's a link to it on there. If you look up Attack on Show on Facebook. Also, I posted it on my Facebook uh, check out this video because we dive deep into the filming, like what it took to make these films 
And it's just a really, really fun uh, chat. They put me through the attacker challenge. So you have to, uh, that's where they ask me, uh, I think seven different questions. And you'll see if I got any of them right or if I got any of them wrong, um, you'll just have to watch it to find out. And uh, it was just a really, really good time. So check that video out, faux show. Um, the next thing I wanted to chat about is the official trailer last week. We crossed over 1 million views. It's amazing. Um, I looked this morning and it was already at 1.3 million, mm -hmm. which is just awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is just amazing. And um, because of it, I'm going to share with you guys uh, soon um, a thank you gift. Now, the the uh, Kickstarter has kind of been flatlined a little bit. We're trying to like get that kind of up and running. And that's usually the nature of Kickstarters is in the middle. Usually they 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 don't uh, spike as much in the middle. It's always the beginning that they do really well and the end that they do really well. But we're trying to kind of uh, raise that a little bit and um, and uh, so usually that's what the thank you gifts are for is every time we hit a new milestone. But because the official trailer went to one million, um, I definitely have a new thank you gift to add into the mix. I'll be showing that soon. Um, but first, uh, another question. So I'm curious, uh, Christy, I wanted to ask, um, you know, we talked a little bit about what it was like when you uh, read for the project, when you auditioned for the project. And I'm just curious, this has been such a journey for all of us. I'm curious, what was what were your thoughts back then, like kind of how you perceived what this project was going to be? And how is that different or how is that similar now, now that we're on the brink of it coming out and we've got a trailer, people are excited about it. And now you can see exactly what it looks like and exactly what it is. Like, what were your thoughts back then compared to what your thoughts are now? Back then, in like the very beginning, I had really no expectations of it. I just thought it was going to be a, a just another project, another film. If something came of it, something came of it. If it didn't, it didn't. And now it's like, okay something might come of this, but even if it still doesn't, it's still cool. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, the whole way along, yeah, it took a few years and there were some bumps and roller coasters and we're like, when is it coming now? When are we going to be done filming that? Stop for the giggles. Like we're kind of, <laughs> we're kind of over the giggles, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I think it's all to, been worth it. We need to talk about what giggles is. Yeah. You all probably don't know. <laughs> so um, usually when you are, when you're filming, there uh, usually what you do is you do as many takes as you need until you got the one like okay we know we got it well then you usually want to do at least one more for safety so you want to make sure you've got two that you're pretty confident are are good to go that way if one of them oh no i thought this was perfect but i didn't see someone's collar was like this or or you know there was something else that maybe you know we didn't see so you always want to do another one so for some reason instead of saying, great, let's do another one for safety, I would just say, let's do another one for giggles. That was just like, because it just sounds weird, like when you're just like, let's do another one for safety. It just, uh, to me, that sounds weird, but it just sounds more natural. Let's do another one for, for giggles, you know, S's and giggles. But um, because sometimes there would be, and sometimes we would get things really quick and we would just kind of move along. Well, sometimes there would be lots and lots of takes until we would get it just right and usually it wasn't the actors. Usually it was like someone's puppeteering a robot and they're like, we're not getting the angle just right. Or the smoke, you know, where we have smoke coming in and it wasn't billowing just right. And so we had to, we had to get everything just right. Or sometimes a train in the background or. Yeah, they're, they're, exactly. It'd be like a train. Our, our studio, our sound stage was right next to uh, where a train would pass through. It usually wasn't too bad, but I think twice a day. Usually uh, trains come through there. So um, anyway, so everyone got really, people were not happy anytime I said, all right, great, let's do another one for giggles. The, uh, so anyway, so what everyone said, they always said on the very last day, they were going to present me with a shirt that said F giggles <laughs> on the shirt. And th th that. that didn't happen. I didn't, okay. I didn't actually get that shirt, but uh, because we were all just joking. We actually truly deep down love the giggles. Um, oh, really? I don't, I, oh, I I don't know. So. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah. Super funny. Let's, uh, let's jump to some, uh, uh, some of the comments mm -hmm. really quick. 
Uh, there might be a couple. Uh, it looks like there might only, uh, there's only one new one at the moment. Appreciate your level of detail. Glad to know it's not sloppy. Thank you, Stephen. Um, yeah, that like detail in like, my gosh, this, there is so much like detail and trying to get things just right that we did with these movies. I mean, everything had to be, um, and it's, it's the way I am as an artist too. I feel like if it has my name on it, mm -hmm. I mean, they're not perfect. Nothing ever is perfect, but I just felt like I always wanted to stay behind. A lot of people always said, how come you're not one of the people in the movie? How come you're not one of the characters? I just, I really wanted to stay behind the camera. Um, and I just, I wanted it to be my vision. And I just, I just, a very detail oriented, but everything always had to be perfect. And then that's why, like with these really cool figures, why the details, um, I have spent a year uh, working with this company uh, to get these, the details on this just right. And there were so many, um, and I think you guys have seen before, these are some of the prototypes that just weren't good enough. So I think this was the first one, this was the second one, and then this is the final standard Fiji. And then of course, inverse Fiji, Kong Chiam Fiji. It's like a little army of Fijis. Yeah. Um, next up, I wanted to chat real quick about <clears throat> the recreate my trailer contest. So this is happening right now. Obviously, uh, this is the movie trailer. And then you guys still have, I believe, 12 days to recreate the Aladdin 3477 movie trailer creatively. And, um, I did a video where I created more than half of the shots and I did it in, in two days and I gave myself some rules. I couldn't use any of the actual props. Like I couldn't use Aladdin's gun, you know, and run around like Aladdin. So I had to use household items and I threw on a wig and um, uh, wigs that were not in the film, by the way, because I gave myself that rule and um uh, just had a lot of fun with it. And in two days kind of assembled all of those, uh, those crazy shots. Anyway, there's really cool links where you can download um, the assets and the sounds and um, some of the footage so that it doesn't have like the logo on top and it doesn't have the dissolves and fades. So if you check out the video, this video on YouTube in the description, it's got the full rules and it's got a link to that as well. Are you and gonna end up posting everyone that submits or just the winner? You will be able to see everyone that submits if you go to YouTube and type in the hashtag uh, recreate a 3477 trailer. Uh, if you type that in, you'll be able to see them all. But also I wanna do, um, I will probably do a video highlighting some of them as as we go through and uh and check some of those out um which will be uh, which will be really cool um how about light up eyes gosh i would love to do a fidgy i would love to do a life-size fidgy with light up eyes and like maybe remote control that makes like moves noise. yeah like makes the noises and my gosh if we could do one interactive where like you're like hey fidgy how you doing today it's like you know, or something that would be so amazing. And now with all the new like drone capabilities, what if we could get a floating Fiji that's a drone that has like infrared and follows you around the house and stuff? That would be, that would be oh my gosh, that would be amazing. I like one can dream, right? And um, real quick while on the uh trailer, um, so uh I referenced earlier that I showed Christy key paintings at the beginning. Uh Let's see, uh, when are we going to see some of this stack of art? You know, I actually have a piece that I'm going to share later that I, uh, that I illustrated of Christy, but also I had drawn up some of the costumes. And some of the costumes that you had, we went, I remember we went shopping mm -hmm. early on downtown Hamtramck where they have these awesome like uh, Indian stores and full of like Bollywood clothes and stuff. I think we got the Sultan's jacket there. Mm -hmm. And um, so there were some, and there were some things that we actually ordered from the other side of the world, from India and from, um, gosh, I'm trying to think of some of the other countries that we got stuff from possibly Pakistan. 
Um, but we also created brand new costumes. Mm -hmm. And so like the, the pajama outfit, I think that was created yeah, that was custom from made. scratch. Like every piece of fabric was created by, uh, Lindsay and Betty Celesto. And, um, and then same for the one, like with the adventure jacket, mm -hmm. with the sleeves and the hood, that was all custom. Every single piece of that was custom design. And so it's the other one that we haven't seen yet. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the the traditional one, oh, the, the red, the red and purple and yellow, that was one that we bought. But the headpiece, my mom made yes. the the with the cool gold things hanging on the sides mm -hmm. and stuff. So uh, my mom actually made that made that jewelry. We'll be sharing a little bit of that later. Real quick, um, uh, David Van Dyke had mentioned he was considering putting together for this contest. Um, for this contest right here, he was considering putting together doing storyboards of stick figures and kind of making it, I think, kind of funny was kind of the idea um, uh, with that. But uh, David has time to draw it, but he doesn't have time to edit it. So he was wondering if anyone in the live stream has editing skills, if he were to, if he were to essentially animate or do a... Um, like an animatic with stick figures is there anyone that would be able to edit it together so if we have any editors watching um uh throw your hands in the air like use a true playa and uh hit up uh david who's on uh youtube right now but you can also find him on facebook david van dyke and uh he's also on instagram so uh so hit him up for sure Aaron G finished his woohoo. So Aaron G has, uh, has done one for the contest. Uh, cannot wait. Um, can't wait to see that. Um, yep. Uh, you nailed it. So anyone that wants to contact David, if you're an editor, hit him up. And, um, I think David said he would split it in the chance that, uh, that you guys win one of the awards. Um, you guys would be able to, uh, split it 50, 50. There is, there's the grand prize, which is 2K, and then there's uh, there's a second and third place, which are smaller money oh, okay. prizes, but all three get gift cards for fixed music, um, which includes Cell Dweller, and then also um, there's some Aladdin swag, and then there's something else I keep forgetting. There's a fourth thing, and I can't remember what that is, but uh, but something fun. How many can we submit? That's a great question, Mike. I'm going to say as many as you want um, because one of them might be the winner winner. Right now I'm nervous because I don't know. I only know one for sure. Actually, we just heard from Aaron G that he uh, that he has one completed. That's the for everyone else. I've been hearing from a few people that are like, oh, I might. I might tinker around. Maybe we'll see. And a lot of times that means, you know, people get busy and um, or maybe they, they do it, but they don't finish, which mm -hmm. you should submit anyway, even if you don't finish. But, um, yeah, I'm going to say you can do, you can submit as many as you want. Fantastic. All right. Uh, so next up, I wanted to do something fun. Uh, last week we had Eric Steele in the hizzle and we had Eric create his own lego minifig his yeah, own block that. figure he put it together wrong oh lord i know what's gonna come he put it together wrong at first he did oh yeah so now i gotta put mine together i thought it would be fun <laughs> to have you create your own block figure and here it is right here princess kamala show us what is up i'm in pieces yeah, in here, if you want, you can either open it that way or I have scissors yeah, here. Yeah, let's do scissors. Because sometimes if you open it, uh, they'll all go, go all over the place. Oh, here, I'll let you. Now you got to let her put it together herself, Matt. All right, I won't help. <laughs> no helping from me. Okay. So walk us through what you're doing here. All right, well... Kind of figure out which face I want. So there's two different. One is more like stern and serious adventure, and I Look think at one those of those nails is, though. Let's let's. <laughs> really oh yeah! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Chris, your nails are. Amazing. That's amazing. 
Look at that rock. Too. <laughs> wow. No, I didn't do these myself. I go every two weeks and get them done. But that's the happy, happy face, it looks like. <laughs> and then this is the not so happy face. By the way, we need to just show real quick. This is the this is the Jasmine figure, which is really cool and really cute. But look at the detail. Mm -hmm. There's so much more detail on this. There one. is so much, and it's even got like gl the gold is like it's kind shimmery. of shimmery. And the side here has got really really fine details, small details. And there's nothing on the side here. Yeah, it's just there's the nothing color. on that. There is actually a back, but there's like the hair you would think would be more wavy, like this hair. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I don't want to be mean, so I'm gonna put the mean one over there. I stick my wig on, which I did not wear a wig in the movie. Oh, well, wait a minute. Mm. Oh, it goes so on inside of the hair. Yeah, you, you get a choice. It can either, you can either wear the hair or you can wear the hood, but not not both at the same time. Okay, now I gotta figure out what are these the arms? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, see, I told you I was gonna do this wrong. And there's an extra hand in there too. I think they give you just in case like one breaks. Okay, I'm gonna need help. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna need help. I know that those are the attachments for the hands. And I think that one too. I think actually, I think this goes on this. It's the laser taser. Yes. Okay, so I got those. That's a stand. There's an extra one of these. So now I just got to figure out where these ones go. Those aren't the arms, you said, but they have to be. Oh, yeah. They're, no, the, yeah, the, the brown ones are the arms. The brown ones are the arms. Do yeah. they just click in? Yeah, they're kind of, they, those are kind of, those are, are, they take a little, okay. yeah, you gotta just like, because once it goes in, it, it, it'll I stay. I just my head off. If you I feel want like help, I'm doing you surgery. Yes, to, please. To help. Okay. I feel like I'm doing surgery and it's never going to work. So this one. Oh, is there a right and a left one? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that could be why. <laughs> This is, why is this? Oh. There we go. And then this one. There we go. And then the hands are a little, they, they might be a little bit easier. You want me to throw these in <clears> as well? Might as well. They're, they're a, little, a little tricky too. Uh, there you go. She doesn't have my gold nails that you made me wear for five years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now. She holds the hologram. Oh, I just broke oh. my arm. Okay. You want me to put it back on? I'm going to, yes, because I'm going to pull out the other arm. <laughs> he just tried and I felt it move. Let's see. I was never a Lego kid or a small little toy kid, so there you go. Thank you. So does this just slide in then? Uh, usually, you just kind of push it in, but just I, that's without, what I ta without taking the arm off. <coughs> there you okay, go. There we go. I'm gonna hold it by its, the bottom of it. And then laser taser. That should be, okay. I got those. Woohoo! It's Princess Kamala. Look, <laughs> you little hold on to it. There we go. Whew. Okay. It's adorable. Oh, and then. Hi, my name's Aladdin. Is that how, is that how Aladdin <laughs> talks? Hi, my name's Aladdin. Hi, my how does Eric talk? Hi, my name's Aladdin. Yeah, pretty That's, much like that. Yeah, That's yeah. the closest. Okay. Yeah, I, I heard it too. I was like, really? Oh. <laughs> Actually, Aladdin is how most how people I say pronounce. It. Yeah, most people, because uh, that's how they pronounce it on the other side of the world. They say Aladdin. Am I the only character who calls him Aladdin? No, everyone calls him Aladdin. Okay. Uh, the Jinn calls him Aladdin because he's British ish. Okay. And then. Bredge is the only one who calls him something different. So the funny story behind that is that um, on the other side of the world, so when I was traveling around the world, I would always ask, how do you say, how do you say Aladdin? Everyone says Aladdin. That's just how they pronounce it over there. 
So I would always ask because I was like, man, Aladdin is so different than Aladdin. So I would always ask, man, can I split the difference? And I would say, can you say, instead of Aladdin, can you say Aladdin? And everyone, no matter what country I was in, was like, no, you definitely don't want to say Aladdin. And I was like, why? And they said, that's the feminine way. Oh. So that would be really insulting. So what I thought would be funny is the character Bridge, who's like his best friend, who always gives him a hard time. Every time he says his name, he says Aladdin okay, that, on purpose. Right. So he's basically the way he's saying it is like, you know, Aladdin's, you know, a little girl <laughs> or something like that. Anyway, gotcha. um, so I'm curious if people will pick up on that on the uh, on the other side of the world. Um, next up. Uh, so we're we're chatting about the mini figs. Right. And we've got. Uh, so this is the Princess Kamala fig. The next thing I wanted to do, uh, speaking of minifigs, is I wanted to chat about um, the next thank you gift. So as you guys know, I'm going to turn this off just because it's the lounge and like I like it loungy and I like it a little bit, a little bit uh, dark. Um, the next thank you gift. So you guys already know. Oh, by the way, if you guys are interested in the Princess Kamala minifig, there is a way to get uh, the princess and the accessories that come with it. And that is in swag box number two, Jin's Wise Choice. So in the first swag box, you get eight, uh, eight, eight <laughs> rewards, eight rewards. And um, uh, also there's two thank you gifts. So in the first swag box, you're actually getting 10 items swag box two there is another eight items that you are getting four of them are here you're getting the full size movie poster you're getting the princess kamala block figure excuse me that you've just seen you are getting the fidgy patch you're getting the aladdin 3477 glow in the dark one inch wristband i love this thing so much and it glows in the dark awesome at nighttime this is like a flashlight it is like a beam of light and uh, if you're all interested, all the cast have one of those. Yes. So you have to join the Aladdin 3477 family and wear your one inch wristband. There are four more items that haven't even been revealed yet that are in Jin's Wise Choice. Although one of them I kind of mentioned, I wasn't sure if you guys want that uh, art as another movie poster or as an art print. Um, would you like it on a goat? Would you like it uh, <laughs> on a boat? So uh, curious what you guys think about that. Uh, the next thank you gift. You guys already know the first thank you gift. Everyone gets this, the Hong Kong Trooper. The second thank you gift we talked about, and there's the Hong Kong Trooper right there. The next gift that you get is the sticker sheet with 13 peel and stick stickers. Where are you going to put these stickers? Well, I'm I'm hoping to get two sheets so I can have one that stays solid how it is, like for oh, a scrapbook kind of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the other one, I'll probably end up making like a behind the scenes album and doing like a, something like that. That's fun. Awesome. What if I gave you a third sheet? Would like one end up on your phone and one on your laptop and one on in the, in the dashboard of your car? Probably not the mm -hmm. dashboard or okay. my phone. Yeah. Because I wouldn't. Well, not. Well, maybe my phone, but I wouldn't put myself on my phone. Yeah. That'd be a little weird. Yeah. Um, but maybe at work on my desk. Yeah. Like on my computer. Yeah. Cute. All right. Everyone's dying to know what is the third thank you gift. Now, first I need to preference these first two thank you gifts everyone gets who backs at any level. This next thank you gift is for everyone that has um uh, it, this is kind of a thank you gift because the trailer has done so well and because we've had over a million views. And a lot of that is because of you guys sharing the trailer, telling people about it. Thank you guys so much. This next gift, though, because the Kickstarter has kind of flatlined and it hasn't really gone up very much, it's very difficult for me to offer a thank you gift for everyone. So this thank you gift is only going to be for people that are backing the Kickstarter at the Lochon's Loot tier which is the fourth swag box even if you're doing the early bird if you're doing the lochan's loot or higher you are going to get this next thank you gift for free and the next thank you gift is 
Lochan Shyamal block figure. So if you want what? a Lochan Shyamal minifig, you are going to get it for free. This is added to now already the fourth swag box has the Blu-ray. It's got the Art of Aladdin 3477 art book. It has all kinds of cool things. It has eight items in it already. Now it's going to have nine items because the ninth item is this thank you gift. Look at that. You are going to get the Lochan Shyamal block figure. He comes with this awesome cape with like the, it's almost like these dark Pope flaps or something in the front. He's got these two like uh, claw things that goes into his hand. He comes with a dagger and he comes with a, uh, a hologram readout of the Taj Mahal blueprints, very similar to what Princess Kamala has, but hers, because she's the princess, hers are pink and blue. And then Lochan's are red and yellow because he's diabolical. You're gonna get this for free in the fourth swag box. Um, so any of you that are at the fourth swag box or higher, you're gonna get this for free if you want this. And let's say you're at one of the lower tiers. If you upgrade to the Lochan's Loot, the fourth swag box, and there's an early bird version of it, by the way, that is cheaper, that uh, those haven't sold out yet, but they are moving. Um, you might want to consider upgrading so that you can get Lochan Shyamal. Let's take some, uh, let's go to the comments really quick. Uh, who made the little droid prop uh, for the film? I'd like to make my own. Uh, it depends on which droid you're talking about. I assume they're talking about Fiji. And Fiji was made, uh, there were so many different versions of Fiji before we got to the final one. Fiji was made by myself and Clayton Celesto. Clayton Celesto really is the mastermind behind uh, getting the gimbal so that we could puppeteer it and have it work from a remote control at the bottom, also making sure that the eyes would light up and everything. But the actual design and like what pieces were used and everything, that was uh, that was myself. And originally, we had so many different things we were gonna do for Fiji, trying to get it just right. The, the second to last thing that we were doing, we were gonna do a puppet that was an actual puppet. We were gonna make it out of foam, but then we were gonna paint it to make it look like it wasn't foam and it just, I could tell already it just wasn't it wasn't working so desperately we were like a week away from filming and i was like what am i going to do what am i going to do and had this radio that looked like an ant head and i was just like <laughs> man if only if i only i could have a head that, that was this cool and it was like wait a minute aladdin makes his own stuff in the future <laughs> like it's like mad max people kind of re uh, you know, they upcycle things to make, you know, whatever they need because manufacturing is dead. So um, uh, that kind of became the uh, that kind of became Fiji, putting uh, all of that together. Um, if you hit me up later, I can share with you. It's a Sony boombox. And then uh, the rest of it is kit bashed. Most of it. There's a, a couple of various pieces that I used of like radio parts and toy parts. But the majority of it is an Omnibot 2000. The, the main torso is an Omnibot 2000, but it's actually upside down and backwards. That is the torso of, of Fiji. Oh, you know, I'm going to do more than one then. All right, Aaron G. I can't, uh, I can't wait to see. All right. And here it looks like he's, uh, he's, um, uh, cheering you on making, um, making the Lego minifig. Uh, I can tell you all about uh, minifigure prints. Oh, interesting. Maybe we should do like a minifigure print. That would be that would be well, amazing. That might, this might sound stupid, but what is that? Well, a minifigure like print. Mini I'm assuming it is just artwork oh, of oh, like oh, the oh, minifigs oh. or something okay. like that. Oh, and we've got the uh, the artwork based on that as as well. So uh, Cassidy says uh, L M A O. Uh, laser taser. If you think it's funny looking at, you just wait until you see how the laser taser is used <laughs> and how it's acquired in the film. It is really, uh, it is really cool. It's a standout scene for sure. The first I've heard of a laser taser. You're going to see one in action. Uh, she is an add-on as well. Great question about uh, the minifig. Uh, so she comes in the second tier, which is Jin's wise choice. 
if you guys are really interested in the minifigs, I'm considering doing an add-on with all of the minifigs. And I haven't revealed them yet, but for one price, if there's for people that are, because I know different people kind of like this for different things. Some people are, are like art book collectors. Some people are into the minifigs. Some people are into the designer toys. And some people just want the Blu-ray. So there's, you know, there's a lot of different things that people are, uh, are into. Uh, about this as well. Uh, ideas to get some kick, uh, shoot me a DM this week and we'll chat. Awesome. Uh, we definitely need a, a spike faux show. Boss level Lochan. That is right. Absolutely. Um, I had the same radio. Yeah, it's great. A lot of people. Um, and I'm hoping people dig that about Fiji. I think it is. Um, I think it is just a really, a really cool thing. Um, some of the best props are the ones made from real world items. See also Ghostbusters, the PKE meter, uh, which has has an Iona shoe polisher. I want to say I knew that, but um, that's amazing. That is so. That is so. That is so great that they uh, that and they use that. And even for Hollywood to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes stuff that's already uh, awesome. Th uh, uh, awesome, uh, Brandon. Um, uh, Oh no, I didn't mean that. I'm curious what you meant. Uh, the print, the uh, the minifig prints. Oh, the maybe the printing on the minifig, or just getting minifigs made in general, uh, perhaps. Uh, perhaps is what you meant there. All right. So um, next up, uh, we talked about the. Um, oh, we need to talk about the Kickstarter real quick. So, um, the Kickstarter. Um, so the Kickstarter is awesome and it, like we had such a great, awesome start and listen, I can't complain because quadruple funded. It's amazing. Right. Um, but we have kind of flatlined and um, you guys have been great telling everyone about it, but it's kind of at a standstill right now. And I was kind of hoping all the new things that I was dropping and like contests and draw this in your own style and the, um, the like the movie trailer would help spike up numbers and stuff but it hasn't really done that it's kind of done even and in fact um i have a, a fun announcement to make today and that is we are quadruple funded and some of you might be saying wait a minute we were didn't didn't that happen like a week and a half ago oh. <laughs> it did happen a week and a half ago but uh, about a week ago, probably like the day or two after the last live stream that we did, um, there were a couple people that uh, had to cancel and a couple people that you can manage your pledge. So if you need to choose a smaller tier or if you need to kind of rise up, you you know, you, you can do that. And, and listen, I understand sometimes it happens. People, there are... Uh, and I reach out to people to see if there's anything I can do better to make, you know, to make the Kickstarter better for them. Usually there's a situation where um, either money is tight or there's a medical thing or, um, and sometimes it's good news. Uh, like one of them, I think was, we just found out that we're having a baby girl. And uh, so I can't argue that. And then, so if they can't, you know, they can't just be throwing money at Kickstarters. So I get it. I totally get it. Um, but anyway, uh, during that week, we had more people cancel and manage their pledge to go lower, uh, which no harm, no foul, but enough people did it that we actually sunk below fourth. So we weren't, we actually weren't for almost a week. We weren't quadruple funded anymore. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, someone please like, because we already announced that we were quadruple funded. And then uh, for about a week there, we were not finally as of, I think today, maybe yesterday, um, it's just over. We're uh, yeah, we're we're just over. So once again, brand new, we are quadruple funded, uh, which is fantastic. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, so thank you guys, thank you so much. But again, please uh, tell everyone um, uh, and try to uh, get people into that. Also, there's a thing, and I forgot to set up stuff for it to share it with you today. But there's a new thing that I'll talk about next time called Kick Booster, where you can actually get cash back for sending people to the Aladdin Kickstarter. And if they pledge, um, you will actually get 10% back, which is really cool because if someone pledges for Aladdin's inner circle, and if they get the red carpet experience, you would actually get a hundred dollars. If you can get 10 people to do that, 
you would get a thousand dollars. So it's actually a really cool way to get our Kickstarter up and running and a way for you to get uh, some cash back. I'll be talking about that next week. Um, I forgot to kind of get that uh, rolling. So anyway, um, well, you know, we need to get that up and running. One of the things that I wanted to share about the Kickstarter, though, that I haven't really talked about yet is the shirts. And even once you are in the first uh, tier, the first rewards tier, which is Taj Mahal Treasure, uh, you get your choice one of five shirts. This is the Princess Kamala. I love this shirt because it's almost like it's just kind of Bollywood. It's just got kind of a neat look to it. Mm -hmm. I would totally wear this all the time. Would you wear this? You would wear this, I right? Wear it. It's totally cool. You I love this. Why not? Thank you for noticing, <laughs> kind stranger. Allow me to enlighten you to my Kickstarter. <laughs> I love it. I, and here's kind of a closer look at it here. But uh, just an awesome, awesome shirt. And uh, there's five different designs to choose from. You get to choose what size and what design you want in the first tier. Now, I believe it is the Sky Sail Sky Club, I believe. You get to choose a second shirt if you're in that tier. Or once you support the Kickstarter at any reward level in the add-ons, you can add as many shirts as many styles, as many uh, designs, as many sizes as you want, and you can uh, get them all and pass them out to your friends. So if you've supported the Kickstarter already, you might want to consider getting some add-ons and adding a couple more shirts that you can uh, pass out to your friends. Um, but anyway, uh, super cool. I can't wait to start seeing everyone. I can't wait myself to wear, um, to wear this awesome shirt. So, Christy, I'm curious, do you have any words of wisdom for actors and actresses uh, getting into the business? Uh, because you're just you're you're so good. And uh, just curious if you have any advice. Not really, other than if you have a drive to do something, anything acting or whatever it might be. But in this case, we're going to talk about acting male or female. It doesn't matter. I mean, it's all the same thing. I mean. If you have a, a goal and a drive and you you know you want to do something, do it. If somebody tells you no, show them why they should have told you yes. Um, just keep going for it. Don't let somebody knock you down. And I mean, there are plenty of people out there that are actors and actresses right now that didn't start until they were in their 40s or older. I don't know. I don't remember exact names at the moment, but I do know I saw an article online and there were a few people that didn't start until yeah. they were like older, older. Were you seeing Alan Rickman? Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman? <laughs> yeah. And like J.K. Rowling, for example, I know it's an author, but she was older when she became somebody. I mean, other like somebody well known, I should say. Um, so I mean, you wasn't just, she writing that? Wasn't she homeless for a little bit? Yeah, had two kids. She was living out of her car mm -hmm. and writing the Harry Potter books yep. out of her car. That's crazy. So you never know. Just I mean, if you have a dream, if you have, uh, don't just stick to your nine to five and not on the side to your hobby. If you have the time and the drive and the motivation and you are happy in something doing what you love, do it, go for it and keep going until somebody bites. Like in this case, Aladdin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I kept going until he bit. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, that sounds. Not literally, James. <laughs> you, um, you, you made it I weird. did not. You made it weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, real quick, in the upcoming week, one of the things that I'm going to be chatting about uh, that I'm going to do a video on, I've got some more comments here, comments here that I'll get to in a second. But one of the things that I'm going to uh, share with you guys, I want to share with you guys a little bit about the art of Aladdin 3477, the Jinn of Wisdom. And I don't have as many pages to share with that uh, just yet. So I don't have as many pages designed for the actual book. Uh, because that doesn't come out until December of this year. Um, and so I'll be putting that together over the summer. But the official collector's edition book, that it has, it's much, much further along. Uh, it's almost finished, actually, in the uh, the design process. But I'm going to be talking about this, I think, on Thursday. I have that one on my den wall. Do you really? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, so this is one of the first paintings that I did of uh, Christy. Yeah, as... and it is a painting. It's not a picture that you gave me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, the actual painting. Awesome. And uh, so anyway, so lots coming up this week. I believe tomorrow, if I can get to it quick enough, I want to share with you 
the Fiji enamel pin, which is designed by Deanna Sheehan. Oh, Can't yeah. wait. And in fact, there's two different versions and um, that are slightly different. So I'll probably do another A and B. Like, do you guys like A? Do you like B? Or are you like, I need to have both. I will pay for both. So C is for both. So uh, I'm going to try to get that. I'm going to try to have that tomorrow if I can get that together um, in time. And um, real quick, let's get to some uh, comments really quick. Um, uh, Fiji Bean Kit Bash from Stuff reminds me of how Tom and Crow from Mystery Science Theater 3000. You know what? It's so funny that you mentioned that. Strangely, there is some of the basic inspiration to do this and to make these films, believe it or not, is actually from Mystery Science Theater. And the reason why I've grown up seeing a lot of the behind the scenes for the Star Wars films and Terminator and how they build things and stuff, but those are experts in the industry that that still they're manufacturing pieces and it's it all looks so good and looks so amazing. But one of the inspirations for me, I remember when Mystery Science Theater uh, 3000 first came out, I remember just being blown away by the set. Like it looked so good. It looked like they were in an actual ship, but then I would look closely and in the background, you would see like a tennis rack <laughs> and you would see all these different things that were just glued to the wall. And then they sprayed it all the same color to look like it's part of this wall. And even though you could tell like, this is a basketball and this is a tennis racket and this is, like an egg carton and like all these other things. If you look close, when you kind of didn't focus on it and you just kind of looked at everything else going on, it really felt like you were inside a starship. And I remember thinking, if you can make stuff look that good with a tennis racket, <laughs> like I should be able to do this. And that was actually, believe it or not, MST3, MST3K was definitely something that like, gave me the drive to, you know what, I can do this. Like if, if they can make it look like that, I know I can kind of one, I can at least one up it. And if people recognize stuff, they recognize, I mean, people recognize stuff in star Wars. I remember the first time I saw star Wars episode one, the phantom menace, um, when Qui-Gon is talking into his little communicator thing, um, that is a popular woman's uh, leg shaver thing. It's the one that looks, it's like a, it's like an oval shape. I, you can tell clear as day, like th that's exactly what it is. And he's talking to Obi-Wan with this <laughs> woman's leg shaver. And it's like, I, for whatever reason, like I recognize that, right? I don't know why I recognize that, but shh, don't, I don't know why. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I know, oh, Lego, uh, but I don't have any production knowledge slash, uh, to want a conflict with that. All right. I'm with you. Um, Fiji being kit bash reminds me of Tom Servo. In yep. That's awesome. Awesome. Um, whoops. Uh, I just switched over. Push the wrong button. There we go. Uh, as an, an advice, uh, let's see, I've worked with an advisor uh, on a comic Kickstarter that pulled a total of over 100 K. Awesome. Um, oh. We can get it rolling again. Um uh, the last three days are big as well, for sure. Um, it'll be interesting to see uh, where it goes. Uh, don't forget, Stan Lee had yeah. a later yeah. start in life. Yeah. That's he right. Was one of them. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, how did you do the background on the Princess Kamala piece? Uh, it looks like stained glass. Uh, awesome. I'm glad you're asking that question. Actually, you're going to find out. Funny story. Uh, you're going to find out in the next class. So actually, I believe I'll be dropping that tonight in your module page. You're actually going to see how I did that uh, that background. That's a great question. Um, in my MACA 2176 painted illustration class. Uh, Deanna's designs are awesome. Look forward to seeing it. Yeah, she is phenomenal. Full show. Uh, the Venus Razor. Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> how, how do you know that, Anthony? Um, uh, Dave Todd says, uh, Phantom Menace had some random skee-ball uh, like racket in Anakin's hut on the back wall. I remember seeing those going, man, those are like, I know what those are. Leg shavers are where it's at, Justin. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> um, awesome. Um, how can we get into your illustration class? Well, it is uh, filled up, uh, or um, I'm not sure if it's filled up, but it, the class has already been running. We're like uh, four weeks into the class, so it's too late to get in now, but um, there will be another one in the fall, and uh, it's at macomb.edu. Some of my classes are remote, uh, but starting in the fall, they are going to be hybrid, um, so I think you will have to be there, although maybe you won't be. Maybe you will be able to do it remote. Hybrids are normally both, so you can do some, some of the days remote and some of them remote. Yeah, classes. that's exactly it. Half the days will be remote, half the days will be on campus, but... I might be able to do it in a way for those of you that are remote because I have students now that are in like different states and I think even uh, different countries as well. Um, so I'll have to I'll have to look into that and see how it works once they're um, once they are uh, hybrid. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So we talked about the art book. I need to talk about next week uh, is going to be a lot of fun because. Our special guest is going to be the Jinn of Wisdom. And for the most part, we've kind of been keeping tight-lipped on uh, the Jinn. And we don't want to reveal too much next week either. But I can't wait for you guys to meet Aaron Golmatis. Aaron G., uh, he's just, he's almost like Genie in real life. He's almost, uh, he's, uh, he's a voice actor um, and an actor and a musician He's so incredibly talented and skilled, and I can't wait for you guys to meet him. Um, uh, the Gin of Wisdom is nothing like Genie, but I feel like Aaron G is almost like Genie with all the, you know, the crazy, the voices and all of the awesome uh, in, impressions and stuff that he can do. Um, uh, so I can't wait to have him on the show. It is going to be a lot, a lot of fun. Um, so that is our class for today. Um, uh, thank you so much, Christy. Did you have a lot of fun today? Yeah, I did. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we'll have you and back. I'll be taking her with me. You are. No, no, absolutely. I'm not kidding. No, yeah, you are. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I was um, just being funny. All right. No, absolutely. Um, that is your gift for correctly putting it together. Well, I had to. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, definitely I'd love to have you back on, um, for sure. Uh, in fact, on, uh, the last day of the campaign, uh, March 3rd. Um, I'll be getting with you uh, about that and scheduling it, but uh, I've got kind of a big announcement coming up for that that uh, I think is going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait to have you back on again. It's going to be cool. All right, that is the live stream lounge for today. Thank you guys so very much. Had, uh, had a blast, and uh, I can't wait to do it again next week. Thank and you. And Bye. And, oh, whoops, I'm supposed to go here. And I'm supposed to go here.